Hello everybody, my name is John O'Keefe. I'm the criminal law lecturer on the FE1 course. I'd like, if I might, to give you some flavour of how we approach this course and why we believe we have the best way of doing this uh, for students who are sitting this examination. The first thing to look at, of course, is the topics that are needed for criminal law. And of course, they seem vast, don't they? There's so many of them, they're everywhere. How do we narrow it down? Well, narrowing it down is what it's all about for us here. We look at primary topics in criminal law, and then we look at secondary topics. So let's just talk about the primary topics for a second, if I might. The first one we like to look at is actus reus and mens rea together. These are two big topics, of course, but we take them as one. We can be very certain that in the criminal law exam paper, we're going to have one, if not two, dedicated questions to those areas. Notwithstanding, they may also appear, of course, in other areas. The second primary topic we look at is homicide, again, a broad area. Thirdly, we look at sexual offences. Then we look at non-fatal offences against the person. Then offences against property. And finally, defences, of course. And these six are key favourites of the examiner. By that I mean they will come up every year on their own and or supported by other parts of the course. Then we've got the secondary elements to the course. The principles of criminal law I always like to look at as well fairly quickly and fairly early on in the course, naturally enough. And they are divided between minor and non-minor offences and presumption of innocence. We like to think that every year at least one or two questions will come up on this particular uh, area. Bail, arrest and detention, of course, is also part of criminal procedure, and we look at that too. Participation in a crime, public order offences, incohate or incomplete offences, and finally, offences against justice and offences against the state. That's how I divide up the course. That's the way we know if you approach the course, you can have a great start as compared to others. A couple of other things to talk about on this particular course. Um, assume each question does not require um, just one aspect of law that is recited or considered. Now, it may be in the FE1s, and particularly in criminal law, that there will be certain questions that require just one topic. Um, but don't assume that, because that, that's the one that gets you across the line. That's the good student. So what we say to you is say, yes, all questions will have one main uh, legal topic of focus, so there is one main legal issue, but always assume even if you're incorrect, it's better to be incorrect on this one. Always assume that there may well be three uh, minor or supporting issues. I'd like to just say, mention briefly as well about the idea of an answer plan in criminal law and how you might get around that. Each of the answers, in my view, should have what we call a mind map or an essay plan written beforehand. And this can form part of the question. It's very important to make it clear, make it legible. It has so many advantages. You can then direct your answer properly when you get to the question. How long have you got for a question? 34, 35, 36 minutes? You might spend six minutes, five minutes or so on doing this essay plan. And it's really putting down all the information you know on that general topic. But the great thing is when you get to the actual answer, you can then do it in a very different way and you can focus in exactly on what's been asked um, of you. Um, never ever ignore the protagonist that might be in a question or indeed uh, the problem itself. And by that I mean very often in problem questions, students are quite good at coming back, talking about Tom, Dick or Harry and advising them. And that's good and it's hugely important. Don't forget about them in hybrid questions. These are questions that appear to be, es uh, appear to be problem questions, but in fact are probably really essay questions. Don't ignore Tom, Dick or Harry in that question. Come back to them. It gives a great sense of structure uh, to your answer. Even in essay questions that appear to be just a quote, from a particular case. Don't be afraid at points to keep coming back to that. Again, it's that type of structured answer. And the final point I'd, I'd make to you in, in this short uh, video clip is again, never go beyond your allocated timings. You've heard that time and time again. You go to your 35 or 36 minutes and you leave it. This is the law of diminishing returns. If you go into 45, 50, 55 minutes, you're probably almost certainly not going to be getting any more marks and you're losing those essential early marks that you could be getting on the next question.